Hello, friends. We are here to talk about one of our favorite events ever, and it is happening next week. I know. I was thinking, like, this is exactly the conference that I wish I had when I was querying all those years ago. Oh, that's nice. Really? What, what about it? Well, I think having the Manuscript Academy, it's made me realize you know, I get to think a little bit like an agent and like a writer now in the process. And I think that being able to see it from both sides actually unlocks so much more possibilities when you come into creating that submission package. I mean, it's really interesting because we've had some people write to us lately. I love our email inbox, by the way. I feel I feel like Santa. But um, yeah, we've had some people write in recently about their rejections. And we're like, guess what? We're doing a rejection panel on day two. And I think it's really interesting because to me personally, it's very important that writers don't immediately pivot the second they get a rejection. I know it's really tempting. And some of you are that A student who just want to get everything exactly right. And any feedback, you're going to take it, you're going to run with it. But then some of you end up going in about 12 different directions at once and exhausting yourself. And you, you don't have to. Please don't do that. I know. Um, it's it's so interesting. My writing group, we all did that. I think every, a lot, I mean, a lot of us did. And it was just constantly chasing someone's idea. But in the end, it really is. You worked so hard on your book, right? And you spent so much time and energy uh, on that project. But if you just... And you look at your query letter and your first page like together and really think about that totally new process. It can really make the difference. Well, and there's also the fact that our brains like to prioritize the things that seem the most dangerous, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, I think it's called negativity bias. So even if you get, you know, 20 people saying, hey, this is great. I just have something too similar, which absolutely is not about you, not your fault, not within your control. And then you have one person who's like, I don't like it. It's very tempting to be like, nobody likes it. I should give up, even if it's 120th of your feedback. And Um, Yeah, so we're trying to find ways to help you overcome what your brain wants to do to you so that you have more motivation to keep going. Uh, Yeah, day two is all about how you can quantify these things, get the information out of the rejections that seem confusing, um, turn it into something that you can chart and graph and see the real pattern of, even though it is tempting for you to just say, oh, everybody wants me to give up, which I promise they don't. Yeah, that was the most uh, when you when you came up with this idea of quantifying rejection, (laughs) it was the most interesting thing I've ever thought about because you're taking something that has an emotional response, but then turning turning into something that has almost a mathematical formula to it, which is so interesting. Because I think writers, we go emotional before we go factual. Yeah, it's one of the few times math is reassuring and not adding stress, <laughs> <laughs> but take, taking the stress away. Um, yeah, so that's day two. We're going to be going over how to, you know, overcome your brain's negativity bias, how to get that real information. And we're going to have a panel going over some of your rejections to to interpret them. Um, but before that, day one, look at us being nonlinear. Day one is all about finding the people you can send your work to and looking at all of these different techniques for finding what people are looking for, putting it all together, finding your keywords, finding your meta tags, finding people you didn't even know existed. And it's it's amazing to me because as an agent who likes to do that deep dive of research for all of the editors I send my clients to. I'm surprised this isn't something that everybody knows, but um, yeah, it, it always seems like people are surprised and finding new ways to do this and how to, we of course talk about how to be um, well-researched versus um, a stalker and how to be polite and not freak people out. But yeah, day one, absolutely how to find the best people to send work to. And day two, all about how to interpret what they say back to you. But in the meantime, one thing I love, Julie, is that there's a community every step of the way. So you do day one, you watch the class whenever you want, whatever your time zone. We know some of you are in other parts of the world with a flipped time zone to New York. And so you watch the class, you can show your research that day, give each other suggestions, have almost a workshop for your research. Day two is your rejection interpretation and then having people to bounce your rejections off of and support each other. And day three is all about your query and first page and optimizing them for what you learned on days one and two and workshopping that together with an agent panel that night. Hmm. It's um, John Cusick is one of our featured agents. Yeah, Julie, you've been to conferences with him before. Oh my right? gosh, he's yeah, he's amazing. So smart and, and has such a great way of looking at work. I think 
we have heard over the years, this is probably our third or fourth time doing this one. Um, and it's definitely our most popular, I think. Some people say, well, I'm not ready for this yet. I'm not even, I'm still drafting. I'm not in that submission process. But I would say to you, if you're, you think, oh, you know, I'll wait till the next time. I think this is just great, no matter where you are in your pub publishing journey, to just kind of start taking this in, these ideas in, because um, you can not only help yourself, but you can also help your writing partners and, you know, the writing community and just be, by being a good citizen um, around the process. And I think the more we talk about this process, the, the process of, um, you know, building a submission package, the easier it is. It's not overwhelming. It's not, it's just going through the steps. Well, I would argue it is overwhelming until you know more about it. Well, true. But well, I mean, I guess what I'm saying is it's if you're if you're like scouring the Internet and you're trying to figure out all the things people say about submission packages <laughs> and that's know, a lot and it's so contradictory. Right. But the, like how the, the way that you created day one and day two, I think it, it was just a for me watching what you did. I think it was it was just mind blowing. You know, it's interesting when you were talking about doing this now as a way to train yourself to think, it reminds me of when an eighth grade, our math teacher, I don't know how she thought of this was like, Hey, everybody write a resume. And I had no idea how to do that. But then that model kind of kept me thinking throughout high school. Okay, those are some things that I can do during high school so that my resume looks better when I apply to college. And I thought that was really useful just to give yourself a format to think about. Um, as you go forward so that as you're writing your query, as you're writing your pages, as you're thinking about who might be a good fit, all of that information can come together and um, reverberate in a way that, you know, each element of it can help you out and help you get toward that goal. Well, I, I think every time, every time you, it's kind of like a map, right? So when you go somewhere, you have a couple of different choices. Right, you can just show up and plop down in, let's like, say, a foreign city somewhere, and then try to find your way. <laughs> but you can, yeah, right, and that's um, you know a nice way to travel because you can explore some things that you know you didn't know, or you could find a cool street, or you could find I don't know a good burrito. When I was in San Francisco, I like turned the corner to the most beautiful burrito place. Oh. But I think publishing, you don't want to find weird streets. Like you want to kind of know where you're going and to have a plan. That's not saying that you might end up signing with someone you never expected to, or you might, your career might go into ways you, you didn't expect. But I think in this really obtuse business, having a clear plan and knowing where you're going really helps, you know, that, that travel, you know, <laughs> that publish that travel through publication. Yeah. I, I love that analogy. It's almost like, what if you found that you were in a place for a week. And after you left, you realized that just two blocks away was the best burrito mm -hmm. ever. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't have known. So sad. <laughs> so sad. <laughs> um, yeah, so whether you are looking for burritos or a perfect partner for your work, I think it's really nice to do all of the groundwork first, just so you can, again, like feed your brain how all of this works. Let it let your brain work on this in the background, let it come out in um, in your pages, even if subconsciously. You know how sometimes people look at their work and they're like, oh, I see that there's a motif there. That was not on purpose, but what a nice surprise. Mm -hmm. Sometimes just like they say to read a book jacket copy in your genre and get the energy into you so that you can more easily write it. I think this is just a really great way to start your brain learning and thinking in this direction so that when you are ready to pitch your work, whether that's this month in January or sometime over the, the course of the year, you just feel more grounded and less afraid. There are real techniques to doing this. You don't have to just kind of send your work out to 60 random people and hope for the best. I, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, it's if you have a map and you know where you're going and you have a sense all, you know, in this process, you know, I think it just streamlines everything. Plus, you get some really fun writer friends throughout mm -hmm. this. I think one of the best ways to make friends is to have a shared activity. And all of you together will be there supporting each other and finding new critique partners and learning together and helping other writers see things that they miss. And they will help you see things that you miss, too. I think 
um, what is it called? The wisdom of the crowd. Altogether, we have some very wise writers together and they're supportive and kind and talented. And yeah, if if I was a writer trying to get published, that would be exactly the community I would want. So Jessica, where can our listeners find this information? Sure. So the three-day workshop, each day there is a class in the morning and a workshop in the afternoon. Again, up to you on your schedule. Day two, we throw in a rejection interpretation panel. And day three, we have a queries and pages agent panel. All of that is, again, on your schedule. It's up for 30 days for non-members, 60 days for members. And we will link it in the show notes, but it's manuscriptacademy.com slash product slash three day submission strategy workshop with hyphens instead of spaces because that's apparently how URLs work. We hope you can join us. It's $39 for the early bird. We've got a few early bird tickets left. And yeah, just what a great way to just change how you see your submissions process and feel better about it and have a team to do it with you. Yeah, we hope to see you next week. Hope to see you there.